Hello physics enthusiasts. Today I'm broadcasting from a seminar room in our institute and in the background you can still see the good old blackboard. So this time no fancy lab equipment but old technique. Today I want to talk about a topic which I was really thinking now for a month um, how to explain it in a simple manner. Um, but it's a very fundamental property uh, of quantum technologies and it's basically yeah, the basis of all quantum technologies, why they give us a benefit in comparison to um, the, the technologies that we are using uh, nowadays. Especially I want to explain this on the example of a quantum computer because this is the case in my experiment. I named it the quantum resource coherence. So coherence, this is the property that I'm talking about. This is the central property behind all these quantum systems that we want to use for quantum technologies. They need a good coherence. So what is this coherence? I want to explain it uh, on the example of a quantum computer, which means we are dealing with quantum bits and um, the comparison to a classical bit, which is used in a classical computer is that, that in a classical bit, it can only have the two states zero or one. That's how we encode the information in it, into it, uh, either by the state zero or by one. The quantum bit in comparison can also take this value zeros and one, but it has to also the advantage that we can create a superposition state. So a combination of zero and one. So it's written here in the physical state notation of zero plus one. And this superposition state, this is, makes now the great advantage and speed up of a quantum computer in comparison to a classical one. Why? One can maybe have a, an idea of that by thinking of um, these uh, operations that are going on in the computer, so the calculations, um, how they are performed. So if you do a, um, an operation um, on, the, on a classical bit, then you do it either on zero or one. But with a quantum bit, you also have the possibility to perform the operation on the superposition state, which means you're performing the same gate operation on zero and one simultaneously. So where you need two operations in the classical computer to perform um, the operation on both possibilities of the bit, you can do it just much quicker by the quantum bit because you just perform it once and you have the result for both. That's in a nutshell very simplified and just to give you an idea of how a speed up in a quantum computer could look like. So it's about these superposition states of the quantum bits and now we want to have a look at how they are physically realized. In my case, in my experiment we, where we are using europium atoms as our quantum bits, it's the following case that we are using the electrons of the atom to encode the information. So the electrons in an atom, they are lying on different energy shells. And now we can define, for example, a lower lying energy shell of the electron as the logical zero and a higher lying one as the logical one. And the superposition state is now possible because it's a quantum system and it can get into this combination of zero and one. And in, in, the, in reality, this superposition of zero and one, this state looks like an electron wave so it basically leads to an oscillation of the electron um, in space this is how the superposition state uh, is formed in reality basically if we look at this electron wave or this electron oscillation then if here i denoted space over time and plotted a graph how this looks like and it's rather like this that you have some certain oscillation of a fast frequency, then you get jumps, then you have a lower frequency, then you get some other stuff. So it's not very harmonic and sinusoidal, this oscillation. It's it is distorted all the time. And if you now have um, in a mind that we want to store information in this state, which means the state is in, phys in the physical reality is an oscillation of the electron, but the oscillation looks like this, then you will quickly see that the information gets lost pretty quick. And the time scale here is depending on the system on the order of nanoseconds, milliseconds, maybe it's, it, seconds are maybe the longest. Okay. So it is pretty quick that these oscillations get distorted and therefore also the information which is stored in this oscillation gets distorted. These distortions, they basically come 
from the environment. We have a single atom, so it's a quantum system which is very fragile and now the environment poses a lot of distortions to it, either other atoms which are basically bouncing into it, this can lead to these jumps and interruptions. Then we have electromagnetic fields around which are also distorting the system. We have temperature fluctuations, pressure fluctuations, all that stuff can lead to, these, um, to this weird oscillation here. So what is now the goal? The goal is to make this oscillation of the electrons, so the electron wave, a perfect wave. So that's basically what we are all behind, all the scientists working on quantum technologies. They want to have the perfect electron wave, which means in a physical language, a long coherence or a long coherence time. So ideally, this electron oscillation in the atom should look like this, like a very harmonic single frequency oscillation because this means that the information is reliably stored for a long time, maybe seconds and maybe hours, maybe days at, at some point. This would be the ultimate goal which we are searching for. So with this, I hope I could um, explain you this kind of complicated notion of coherence, but this is really the fundamental properties behind all the quantum technologies.